work hard like it, it, I mean every waking hour that's that's the the thing i would i would say if if you particularly if you're starting a company when i was young i i uh, I didn't really know what I was going to do uh, when, I, when I got older. Um, people kept asking me, and, and um, but, but then eventually I thought that the idea of inventing things would be would be really cool. And uh, the, the reason I thought that was because um, I, I read a quote from Arthur C. Clarke, which said that a, um, a sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic, and, and that's really true. Um, if you th if you go back, say 300 years. The things that we take for granted today uh, would be you'd, you'd be burned at the stake for, um, you know, being able to fly, being able to see over long distances, being able to communicate, um, and having access to all the world's information uh, instantly from almost anywhere on the earth. Um, this is this is stuff that that really would be magic, it would be considered magic um, in, in times past. In fact. I think it actually goes beyond that because there are many things that we take for granted today that weren't even imagined in, in times past. They weren't even in the realm of magic. So it actually goes, goes beyond that. So I thought, well, you know, if, if, if I can do some of those things, basically if, if, if I can advance technology, then that, that's like magic and that would be really cool. Um, and the, the, I always had sort of a slight existential crisis because I was trying to figure out what does it all mean? Like, what's the purpose of things? And um, I came to the conclusion that if, if we can advance the, 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 the knowledge of the world, if we can do things that expand the scope and, and, and scale of consciousness, then we're better able to ask the right questions and become more enlightened. And, and that's really the only way forward. I mean, I, th I think about what's, what technology solution is necessary in order to achieve the particular goal and then try to make as much progress in that direction as possible. I think the being a multi-planet species and being out there among the stars is important for uh, the long-term survival of humanity. And uh, that's one reason, kind of like life insurance for life collectively, life as we know it. Um, but then the part that I find personally most motivating is that it creates a sense of adventure and it makes people excited about the future. Um, you know, if you consider two futures, one where uh, we are forever confined to Earth until eventually something terrible happens, or another future where we are out there on many planets, maybe even going beyond the solar system, um, I think that second version is incredibly exciting and inspiring, and there need to be reasons to get up in the morning. You know, life can't just be about solving problems, otherwise what's the point? There's got to be things that people find inspiring, uh, and make life worth living. When my brother and I were starting our first company, uh, in, instead of getting an apartment, we just rented a, a small office and we slept on the couch. Uh, and we, we showered at the, the YMCA. And uh, we're, we're so hot up, we had just one computer. So the, 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 the website was up during the day, uh, and I was coding at night, seven days a week, all the time. Um, and I, I uh, sort of briefly had a girlfriend in that period, and in order to be with me, she had to sleep in the office. So uh, work hard, like it, it, I mean, every waking hour. That's that's the the thing I would I would say, if if you particularly if you're starting a company. A natural human tendency is wishful thinking. Um, mm -hmm. So a, a challenge for entrepreneurs is to say, well, what's the difference between really believing in your ideals and sticking, sticking to them versus pursuing some unrealistic dream that right. doesn't actually have merit. And it's, it's, that, is a, it, that is a really difficult thing to, to tell you. Can you tell the difference between those two things? Right. You know? So you need to be sort of very rigorous um, in, in your self-analysis. Uh, self I think certainly extremely tenacious uh, and, um, and then just work like hell. I mean, you just have to put in, you know, 80 hour, 80 to 100 hour weeks every week. That, that, that all those things improve the odds of success. How do you think about making a decision when everyone tells you this is a crazy idea? Or where do you get the internal strength to do that? Well, first of all, I'd say I actually think I, I, think I fear, feel fear quite strongly. Um, so it's not as though I just have the absence of fear. I, I feel it quite strongly. Um, but there are just times when something is important enough, you believe in it enough, that 
you, you do it in spite of fear. I feel fear about this and therefore I shouldn't do it. Um, it's normal to be to feel fear. Like you'd have to there'd be something mentally wrong <laughs> if you didn't feel fear. Um, so you just feel it and let the importance of it drive you to do it anyway? Yeah, I, you know, I, actually something that can be helpful is fatalism uh, to some degree. Um, if, you just, if you just accept the probabilities, um, then that diminishes fear. People who've been in the rocketry business for decades yeah. who say about you that you don't know what you don't know. Well, I, I suppose that's true of anyone. How can anyone know what they don't know? <laughs> but, when um, critics say you can't do this, your answer to them is... We've done it. You know, there are American heroes who don't like this idea. Neil uh, Armstrong, Gene Cernan have both testified against commercial space flight and the way that you're developing it. And I wonder what you think of that. I was very sad to see that uh, because those guys are, yeah, you know, those guys are heroes of mine, so it's really tough. You know, I, I wish they would come and visit and, and see the hardware that we're doing here. And, and I think that would change their mind. They inspired you to do this, didn't they? Yes. And to see them casting stones in your direction. It's difficult. Stage two tanks pressing for flight. Flight computer has control of the vehicle. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Rather than reasoning by analogy, you boil things down to the most fundamental truths you can imagine and you reason up from there. And this is a good way to figure out if, if, if something really makes sense or if it's just what everybody else is doing. Um, it, it, it's hard to think that way. You can't think, think that way about everything. It takes a lot of effort. Uh, but if you're trying to do something new, it's the best way to think. This is bad. that this window of opportunity is open for life to go beyond Earth. And we just don't know how long that window is going to be open. But the thing that gets me most fired up is that creating a self-sustaining civilization on Mars it would be the greatest adventure ever, ever in human history. It would be so exciting to wake up in the morning and think that that's, that's what's happening. <laughs>